I'm ready so you can lock the door. Okay. What are you ready for? Ready. Ready to go. Ready to leave. <laughs> to warmer weather. Yeah. Oh. This starts our big adventure. Yep. Our biggest one so far. Okay. Yep. We'll be back. Whenever. Whenever. <laughs> when we get done seeing everything. Okay. All right. Well, guys, we're getting things packed up and getting ready to leave for our winter trip. Still got some stuff to put away, especially back here. Got a lot of stuff on the beds. But got quite a bit of clothes packed up here. Diane's got quite a bit of her stuff packed up. Trying to figure out where we're going to put everything. But also, I'll show you in the back. We also have uh, stuff put away in the very back of the trailer. You can see, maybe you can see better on this side. There's a couple bins there. That's all our change of season clothes. And then we use the center section here for bulk storage. So in here we'll carry our paper towels, toilet paper, tissues, um, big bag of dog food for the dogs, all that stuff goes here. Okay, working on the final things, get ready to go. Yep, just putting the clean dishes away. Yeah, I think we washed about every dish we had this week. Yeah, probably. Between Thanksgiving and using the silverware. Yeah. Two things left to go in. Of course, you can't forget Monty and Zephyr. We got all the water turned off, and I've got to put antifreeze down the drains just in case, and that should be about it. Just like in your RV, you want to put about a quart down the drain. Just enough to make sure that the traps are full. Now I'll go do the other sinks and toilet and we'll be done. Should we close the drapes? Yeah, I'd close the drapes. You'd maybe just leave them just a little bit open so that the, you can tell the lights are on. Yeah. So we have a checklist of all the things we need to go do. And at this point, I've got most everything done. I've got a couple more things to check off, but we're just about there. Hey Siri, goodbye. Okay, nice talking with you. See you next time. Welcome back to Zephyr Travels. I'm Randy. And I'm Diane. And this is Monty. And he's leaving. <laughs> yep. And we are starting our biggest adventure ever. Yep. Our uh, lap of America, or the, not America. Lap of the U.S. Lap of the U.S. That's right. We are, we've just left our home in, outside of Rochester, New York. And we're heading right now down towards Florida, but we got some stops along the way that we'll share with you in this video. And from there, we are going out west and Wyoming and... Some of the northern states. Yep. We don't even know all of, all of it yet. It's not all planned. It's only planned about two months out at this point. But um, we knew a couple places we're going to be later in the year. And one of them is going to be the International Rally for the Airstream. Right. And today, our first stop is in Virginia. Yep. Yeah, we're going to be overnighting at a KOA near Richmond. And we'll probably come back to you when we get there. Okay, for now. <laughs> All right. You, see you a little later. Yep.
on day two of our travels. Last night we stopped at a KOA, King's Dominion KOA, just outside of Richmond. What'd you think of that uh, campground? For the night it was fine. We had a pull through site. We got there uh, after dark, so it was a little later. So basically we rested a bit, took the dogs for a walk, and then went to bed. Got up kind of early. Both had alarms going off. I think mine went off more than yours. Yeah. I don't know why it went off at like six o'clock. Anyway, we got on the road about quarter to nine, a little bit before we had, Randy had said 9 a.m. So we're back on the road. We have a bit shorter drive today, only about four hours. So that won't be too bad. Yeah, it's about a four hour drive, but with stops and stuff, it'll be a little bit longer than that. All right, we'll probably have to stop for gas and something to eat. Yeah. So yesterday's drive was 500 miles, and it was over nine hours driving, and we were on the road for almost 11 hours when you figure stops and for fuel and food and such. So it was a long day, but we left early in the morning, got to the campground about 7 o'clock at night. So. Right. And the campground was okay. Um, it was reasonable. I don't remember the exact price, but I believe it was under $40 a night. Full hookups, uh, pull through site like Diane said. And you know, my, my thoughts on a, a KOA is that they're like McDonald's. You know, you, you go there because you know what you're going to get. You don't go there for fine dining. And that's really what you're going to get out of a KOA. You know, you know what you're going to get. And it's, you know, when you make your reservations, you're always going to get the same thing and you're going to be comfortable with it. Right. And plus it's off season, so yeah. there's very few campers in the campground. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure that probably would be a great place to go, you know, during this, you know, the camping season when King's Dominion is open. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think you're within walking distance, but you're maybe a minute or so driving distance away. Yeah. It looks like they have a shuttle. I mean, I saw a van in front of the building that might shuttle people over to the park, or maybe they have a, a bus or something that comes through. Right. So I'm sure it's a great place. They have the standard amenities that most KOAs have. Yep. Dog park for the dogs. They were happy. Especially Monty. Monty loves the dog parks. And yep. Randy said he seems to know when he's near one because probably because of the smell of all the dogs. Yeah. So, so they got to the dog park. So now we're on our way again and uh, it's highway driving. Yep, now we're headed today to Concord, um, North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte. We're actually going to be staying within a couple miles of the Charlotte Motor Speedway. That's not our reason we're going there. Um, something a lot of you probably don't know is we've owned a, uh, a Ford Mustang for the last oh, over 25 years, uh, almost 30 years now. Yeah, it would be yeah, 30, 30 years, years. Next, next year. Right, right. We've had a Ford Mustang. So we're Mustang fans. We, you know, before RVing, we've gone to um, Ford car shows and such all the time. So there is a Ford Owners Museum in Concord, North Carolina. So we're going to go there. We're going to spend the night, and then we're going to head over to the museum and check that out. visiting the Mustang Owners Museum which is located in Concord, North Carolina and Randy and I are going to go in and take a tour of the museum. We'll be doing a video if possible inside. Some museums do not allow it. Uh, yeah, hopefully they do. I think they do. I've yeah. seen some videos from inside here so hopefully they'll allow us. Yeah. So we're going to go in and check it out. Yep. Now what a lot of you probably don't know is 
we've owned a Mustang. Actually, we've owned several Mustangs. Yes, we have. Over the years. And we have one home in the garage that we've had for the last 30 years. So this is kind of neat to us. I mean, we're big Mustang fans. We've been to all the Mustang shows, up in the Northeast at least. And, you know, kind of something that's kind of near and dear to us, like right up there with air streaming, isn't it? Right, right. Yeah. So let's get in there and check this out. Okay. This is Mustang number four. It's actually one of the World Fair Mustangs that was built and used for a ride uh, during the 1964 World Fair when the Mustang debuted. This car was set up so that people could come to the World Fair and ride it. It was just a shell of a car, no motor or anything. It was on a track system that pulled it around. Well, a person bought the car and then was able to get it registered and build up with a motor and now it's the number four Mustang built. This gold Mustang was owned by Henry Ford II, the Deuce, and it's one of 50 Mustangs built for a golden anniversary in 1966. He gifted this car to his butler and he kept it at uh, Henry Ford's estate and it's now been on loan for the museum. I should add, the reason it's a gold Mustang, it, it's a commemorative edition because they sold one million Mustangs. This 65, 65? No. This 66 Cobra was bought for $360. It was involved in a theft and actually a hit and run and then was abandoned in the Hudson River. It was pulled out of the Hudson River by a salvage company which took it to a local Ford dealership and tried to sell it to the Ford dealership. The Ford dealership was not interested in it but one of the employees was and bought it for $360 for the salvage cost. He then spent the next few years collecting parts and you know restoring the car over time. Eventually he completely restored it but he was it and now the car is worth $2 million. So this Mustang is an Eleanor Mustang. It's most recognizable from the movie Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage from 2000. This car is a reproduction. It was done by Classic Re Recreations and they're the only company that can do these. Um, there's a story where a very popular YouTuber decided to build his own and start a whole YouTube series saying we're building an Eleanor Mustang. Unfortunately he was sued by the people who own the rights to the name Eleanor Mustang and it ended up actually losing the car. So if you want to make your Mustang look like an Eleanor Mustang, don't call it that. <laughs> This is, their, this is their barn find Mustang. This Mustang is in original condition. It was literally like it was found in a barn. It is number 211 off the assembly line on the first day of Mustang production. All the previous numbers were probably pre-production numbers. So this is considered to be the lowest production uh, Mustang built of regular production. Then what's interesting about this car, it's, it's actually in all original condition with the rust and the duct tape on the seat, but it's worth more money in this condition than it would be if it was restored. Because they're only original once. We just finished our tour of the Mustang Owners Museum, and what did you think, Diane? It was fantastic. I mean, the cars in it were really nice. We talked with the woman that was working there, yeah. working there and she said they do swap out, the, they have what? Every six months they swap Every out the cars and they change yes. them around so they get different cars. So got us thinking maybe some year we might put our car in here, we're, we're going to have to think about that. Yeah, Randy talked to the lady a little bit and they do take 
um, different cars. You yeah, loaners. Loaners. Yeah. And uh, you can send description and a picture and if they have a certain niche that you know your car will fill they could contact you and you could loan it and uh, like Randy said they do swap them out every six months yeah so that might be kind of fun to do yeah yeah so but it, it, it was a really nice museum and yeah, very and enjoyable it's not, it's not too big so you don't get bored and uh, yeah a nice little gift shop yeah it, you know, figure about an hour to tour it yeah. The cost is ten dollars per person. They do offer senior discounts and military discounts. And military discounts, yes. yes. So well worth it. Yep. So All right. We're on on our way. Yep, we're on our way to our next campground. We're back on the road again today, and last night we stayed just outside the Charlotte Motor Speedway at Yates Family Campground, and that turned out to be okay for the night. Yeah, that was a small campground. It looked like. Most of the people live there. Um, yeah, they seem to have a, um, a fairly good, you know, monthly, you know, great campers there that fill about half the campground. Right. But we had a nice spot, and it was full hookups, and it was only thirty dollars a night, so that was reasonable. And for the night, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I would get it, you know, four and a half stars or so. Yeah, and now we're on our way. Actually, we're now in South Carolina and we're staying about what an hour outside of Myrtle Beach yeah about an hour uh, west of Myrtle Beach maybe a little bit more okay. we're staying at uh, Little PD State Park it's right off of Interstate 95 so to give you an idea roughly where it is. I think it's probably close to Florence right so yeah we'll be there until Sunday be there a few nights and then uh, show you some of that place and what we do around there next. Let's not waste time, take this slow.